you are Locked On Giants Postcast, part of Locked On Sports Bay Area on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, what's up, Giants fans? Welcome back to the Locked On Giants Postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle, former producer for the Murph and Mac show on KMBR. And today, the Giants needed to show some signs of life as they returned to Oracle Park and they did just that and beat the reigning National League champions, the Arizona Diamondbacks, 5 0. Logan Webb showed everyone again why he is the bona fide ace of this staff in a pitching performance that was nothing short of dominant. The Giants got him some run support finally tonight, but he didn't need it at all as he blanked the D-backs over seven innings of work and the bullpen did the rest, even set some new career highs in the process. We'll break it all down, but first, Thanks to everyone for watching us on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. If you aren't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Thanks also for listening on the Locked On Giants podcast feed. However you're getting the show, we appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to check out the Locked On Giants daily show for more in-depth coverage. Ben Caspic does a great job. In, in this one, Logan Webb saw himself in trouble, actually, in this first inning feels like a long time ago watching watching the extent of how dominant he was on the mound but he actually did allow a couple base runners in this one believe it or not first and third with one out in that top of the first inning and he worked out of it allowed the first two runners of the game on uh first and second nobody out ground ball advanced the runner to third and he settled in after that he worked out of it and this is exactly what we've come to expect from Logan Webb when he's on the bump. If he's going to give up some runs, he's going to run into trouble. It's usually early on, and, and he settles in and finds his rhythm as the game continues. He like gets stronger as it goes on, battle-tested. And the Giants jumped on a jumped on a relatively early lead. In the bottom of the third, they, they had to take out Ryan Nelson, who got hit with a comebacker in the second inning. So Logan Allen came in from the pen, and this posed a little bit of a challenge for for the Giants, you know, would have because they had their their lineup set for righties in the game, and and then the the left hander comes in out of the pen after just two innings, so it put the Giants in a little bit of a hole. But thankfully, this isn't last year's squad, and we actually have everyday players on this year's team. So the Giants end up tacking on five runs in this one. The first of which came in the bottom of that third. Pat Bailey lead off double Jung Hoo Lee slaps a, a second infield single, his second one of the day and Bailey can't score, but gets to third Lamont Wade jr. A deep drive to center field scores. Bailey giants take a one, nothing lead. And really that was all that Logan Webb needed to work with. He was absolutely cruising in this one, retiring a career high 19 consecutive batters in this one. And when you think about what Logan Webb has done with his career, finished second in National League Cy Young voting last season, for him to set a new career high in something like this is kind of a big deal, I think, for him. He is so dominant on the hill. He pitches a, uh, to contact, and that's something that is a lost art in today's game. Uh, there was some discourse this week about about true aces on MLB Network and, and if Logan Webb was one of them. And I thought the fact that that was even a question was ridiculous in a word. <laughs> I got a lot of other words I want to say, too, but I can't if I want to keep my job. But absolutely ridiculous, asinine, just a bad take all around. If you don't think Logan Webb is an ace, I don't think you watch baseball. So get get on board with Logan Webb. And I mean, are we really surprised that Webby came out on fire tonight? I mean, he is probably still very hyped about his Sacramento Kings bouncing the Golden State Warriors, ending their season from the NBA play-in tournament. Logan Webb loves his Sacramento Kings. Sacramento guy loves his Kings, loves his beams. And he's he was fired up for this one. I mean, if you remember last year, he had some side bets going with guys in the clubhouse like Brandon Crawford about what was going to happen if uh, if the Kings beat the Warriors or if the Warriors beat the Kings. So this time Webby comes out on top. Unfortunately for Webby and for some Giants fans who still probably miss Brandon Crawford, no Crawford in the clubhouse for Webb to win some uh, some extra bucks off of. I don't think they were betting money. I think they were just betting like, you know, things, doing embarrassing things. Uh, but point being, Logan Webb locked in tonight, cruising. Everything's great in Webb world over there with the Kings winning. And of course, his performance on the mound tonight goes over 100 pitches. As I said, retired a career high 19 consecutive batters. Seven innings pitched, does not allow a run. Only had the one walk, and he had four strikeouts, I believe, in this one as well. 
look five strikeouts excuse me and logan webb only gave up the, those two hits those first two batters of the game that's it absolutely walked in tonight a just marvelous performance from logan webb and and this is something that we've I think come to expect from the ace of the giant staff. The giants have had plenty of aces in my lifetime and Webb is just as good as every single one of them, including this guy over my shoulder, Matt Kane with the world series trophy in his hands. And, and I would love to see Logan Webb hoisting that trophy one day too. So hopefully the giants can get there eventually, but this one had some other cool little wrinkles in it. I thought there was a, a nice moment for Mike Yastrzemski in this one, who a couple nice moments for Yaz actually he had a pretty good game when this one all was all said and done. He had a nice, great, nice catch in right center diving in. He had, he was able to have the wherewithal to check where Jung Hu Lee was. And if he was going to be able to, to sell out on this ball and hope that it wouldn't roll all the way into to the end of triples alley and Jung Hu was in perfect position to back him up. Yaz took the chance, made the diving catch. And that's what he gives you out in, in right field, even if he's not hitting at the plate. And that's why he's on the field still. He and Jung Hu Lee covering all of that ground in right center. I mean, we all know how, how huge Triple's alley is. And it matters. Defense matters a lot, especially when you have a pitcher like Logan Webb who pitches to contact. Yes, he gets a lot of ground ball outs but he gets a lot of contact and puts a lot of balls in play. Same with guys like Kyle Harrison. There, he's a fly ball pitcher more like opposed to Logan Webb, who's a ground ball guy. Harrison's going to be giving up fly balls that go deep into the outfield. And you're going to need outfielders that can go track those balls down. And that's what Mike Yastrzemski does. Not to mention Jung, who is still learning this outfield. This is a weird outfield has lots of strange dimensions and you need somebody who's experienced out in right field to kind of bring Jung Hu up to speed. Remember, this is just the second homestand of the season. It's he's going to take some time to really master that outfield. You see, Jung Hu obviously has all the tools, the speed, the the glove work, the arm. He has it all. All he needs is the feel for the yard, and that's what Mike Yastrzemski helps him do. Get a feel for the yard. I mean, that's a play that maybe Jung Hu could have made. I mean, if he didn't have Yastrzemski there and was selling out full speed all the way, maybe he gets to that one too. He looked like he was in pretty good position to try and make a play on it as well before he pulled up and backed up Mike Yastrzemski, who had a little bit better of an angle on the ball as it was tailing towards Yaz. I know we all want to see Matos. I get it. I want to see him too. But there's a reason Mike Yastrzemski keeps getting starts, and it's because of his defense. And he rewarded the Giants later in this one in as he helped that parade that came across in the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth. He uh, he had an RBI single that drove in two with two outs. That was great. We've talked so much about how Mike Yastrzemski has been an automatic out in these two out situations with runners in scoring position. And today he came through a great sign for the Giants. That eighth inning after clutching to a one run lead all game long, the Giants busted it open gave Camilo Duvall a night off. He didn't even have to uh, make an appearance. I thought we were going to have to uh, track the uh, Camilo Duvall save counter again and, and put him up to number 73, but he's going to stay at career 72 for a little while longer as he didn't even need to come out of the bullpen. Uh, the Giants tacked on four runs in the bottom of that eighth inning, all started with a Nick Ahmed shot off the left field wall. He got all of that one. It just barely missed a home run by a couple of feet. If he had a little bit better of a launch angle, I hate saying that, but if he had a little bit better of a launch angle, probably would have gone out. But I think for Nick Ahmed, who also had a nice play at short, a couple nice plays at short in this one, this game probably felt like his version of the World Series. The Diamondbacks, if you guys don't know, I know we're all pretty familiar with Nick Ahmed. He was a in the Diamondbacks organization for forever. He was over there for like a decade. Uh, won a couple gold gloves with them. He's actually their career leader in games played at short, but the Diamondbacks actually cut him in the middle of their World Series trip last year, their run to the World Series last year. In September, they cut him for a prospect that they wanted to bring up that was a better hitter, and it did not sit well with Ahmed, obviously. I mean, this guy was their career leader at games played at short, and they very unceremoniously DFA'd him in September in the middle of a playoff push. I think for any competitor, especially a guy who has been a staple of your franchise, that's not going to sit well with you. And so Nick Ahmed, I'm sure this played into his decision to come back to the NL West. He probably wanted to come to a team that he's going to have a chance to, to stick it to the D-backs with. And, and that's what he did tonight, man. He he had a shot off of that uh, 
off that left field wall. And you could see him standing on second, kind of celebrating a little bit. You you knew that that he was feeling that one. And the Giants actually showed off their fancy new lights after that big hit. I think they were waiting for a home run, but they did the whole little mini light show thing. That was pretty cool. Uh, add something fun and new to the yard. The Giants are so good at keeping Oracle Park up state of the art, up to date with the times and the technology that's out. And that's why Oracle Park continues, part of the reason why it continues to be one of the best venues, for my money, the best venue in all of pro sports, baseball, football, basketball. I do not care. That's the most beautiful ballpark I have ever seen. I love, love Oracle Park. And Flynn even said on the broadcast that Kaipo almost fell out of his chair when he saw the, the light show going off. Uh, so that was that was kind of a fun moment. The, the Nick Ahmed double off the wall, but that set the table as jung Hu Lee reached on a sharp ground ball and an error by the D-backs infield. But considering he had the two infield hits earlier in this one, he was obviously putting some pressure on the Diamondbacks infielders to make a play. Wade Jr. walks. So we get the bases loaded with nobody out. Uh, Solaire hits into a fielder's choice with the infield in. The runner gets thrown out at home. But then Kyle Nelson, San Francisco native, comes in for the D-backs. Next pitcher out of the pen. And Wilmer Flores comes up with a big pinch hit double that scores two huge hit makes it three to nothing giants and wilmer has had a couple big pinch hit uh clutch moments lately the the giants so far having some success they've they've had 22 pinch hits the most in baseball so far this season and have collected six hits also tied for the most pinch hit hits in all of baseball that's a 272 batting average five rbis in such situations the, this was something that the Giants kind of figured out during the Kapler regime, and it looks like it's going to be a part of the Bob Melvin regime, too. These guys are so good at staying ready. You don't got to get ready if you stay ready. And Wilmer Flores has been so good at doing this for years for the Giants. Maybe, and it wasn't, I don't think it was, you know, the, the Kapler, you know, brain math algorithm stuff that was getting the giants these pinch hits i think it was the players i think it was wilmer flores who's just good in these situations coming through when it mattered yeah you can put a guy in position to make a make something happen at the plate but they still gotta go do it and wilmer flores goes out there and does it almost every not every single time but far more often than most guys do in these situations i love wilmer flores in, in these pinch hit situations he is so good at it And he's such a weapon off the bench for the Giants. I mean, I know a lot of people want Wilmer to start the big bat. He he could really add something to this Giants offense, but he is so good as a pinch hitter. One of the best pinch hitters, I think, in all of baseball. And it's such a weapon for you to be able to bring this guy in in the eighth inning, cold off the bench, and watch him just rope a double down the line that that makes it a 3-0 game instead of a 1-0 game. That is something that so many teams do not have, and the Giants have a luxury of having that on their squad. Uh, Ryan Walker came in in the ninth because the Giants pushed this to a 5-0 lead after that Mike Yastrzemski single that drove in two. So Walker comes in, strikes out the side, only needed 13 pitches to do it. He has been electric this season. He is, I mean, I think he's he's really the true setup guy for Camilo Duvall. I think he's kind of earning that role with his performance early in this year, this bullpen is really starting to take shape. Eric Miller. I like a lot Roop, I like a lot. All of these guys look so good. You got the Rogers twins. You have so much versatility in that bullpen. So many guys who do so many different things. You got the heaters from, you know, Miller can get out there, throw triple digits. Doval can throw triple digits. Walker throwing just all sorts of junk up there with some, some speed in, it's 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 nice and then you got tyler rogers up there throwing frisbees and rising sliders this bullpen is so versatile and it is such a weapon for the giants to have another another finish to a game where the bullpen does their job doesn't give up any runs just cruising right along giants pick up the five nothing win and this is an important win because you if you look at the nl west you figure the D-backs and the Giants are kind of going to be battling for some playoff positioning here coming down the line. You never know what uh, what what this is, is going to look like at, at the end of the season. You don't play each other nearly as many times as you used to with the old schedule. So getting wins against division opponents really matters. Against teams that are going to be fending off for a wild card spot, maybe because, let's be honest, the Giants aren't winning this division with the Dodgers doing what they're doing. That's just not going to happen you're going to have to realistically look for a wild card slot. And this is a team that you're probably going to be battling for that position along with the Padres. So you got to win 
got to win some of these early season games, especially since the Giants have, have you know, more or less split games with the Padres. Yeah, they did win that one series. Uh, only one of two series the Giants have won all season long uh, in their last home stand against or against uh, the Padres. Hopefully they can make it a second series win in a row. Second series win at home. The Giants have now won three of their last four. Maybe they're getting rolling. Maybe they're getting rolling. The offense looks like it's showing up when it matters. And of course, Logan Webb is just as dominant as ever. On the other side, we got to talk about this stupid, I can't believe I even got to address this, but this stupid discourse that is Logan Webb an ace or not? Of course he is. And let me remind you all why, in case you forgot. On the other side, we'll break down Logan Webb's greatness on the Locked on Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. We will be right back. Locked on Giants postcast is sponsored by Policy Genius. Life insurance is an important safety net for your family, but trying to find the right policy on your own can be time consuming and overwhelming. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide, provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $2.92 per year up for up to a million dollars of coverage. Some off some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through all of it, saving you tons of time when researching what fits best for you and your family, saves all that work for you. Talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. This is important because you may not be as covered as you think you are. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. And even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NBA. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard's not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you're, you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you got to dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, charge your charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb up that leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle tonight. Logan Webb, absolutely dominant. I'm trying to think of another word, but that's just the best word to describe him. Dominant on the hill, three base runners all night long in a 5 nothing win over the Diamondbacks. <clears throat> Logan Webb now 5-1 and one against the Diamondbacks in his career at Oracle Park. He is every much of every bit of an ace as the Giants have ever had. I mean, I you throw out a name, throw out a name. Logan Webb is that same top tier level as of pitcher as that guy. You want to talk Bumgarner, Kane, Lincecum. I know they're all three here at the same time. But Jason Schmidt. I mean, this guy is top tier, top tier in, in across all of baseball. And he doesn't get the respect that he deserves. I have heard all week long, people talking on these national shows about what's a true ace. And if Logan Webb is a quote, true ace or not. And, and the fact that this is even being discussed is insane, asinine. It's irresponsible reporting and journalism is what it is. This guy is, I mean, just because he's not putting up 200 strikeouts a season, he can't be a great pitcher in some people's eyes. That's, that's ridiculous. He is the best ground ball pitcher Still in today's game. He finished second in NL Cy Young voting last year with a 325 ERA. He led all eight candidates 
with 216 innings pitched. He also had the most complete games of all candidates, and he had a complete game shutout last year, which only one other candidate had a complete game shutout of all National League Cy Young candidates in the top eight. He had 31 walks, the lowest among all of the eight Cy Young finalists, uh, 1.074 whip, the lowest among all eight finalists. And he's doing all this with terrible run support. He had barely over an average of three runs a game of run support in last throughout last season. It, some of the worst, one of the worst uh, run support averages in all of baseball, a career in this. None of this is new. It's not like Webb just had one great season. He's a th- career three, four, two ERA, 114 games started 615 strikeouts and 674 innings pitched a career whip of 1.179 not far off from what we saw him doing last year he is not new to this he is true to this the the killer whale andre nicotina's you know he, biggest fan with his walkout song every year since his rookie season he has well over 50 percent ground ball rate one of the best in the big leagues the best in baseball he's not given the same love as all of the uh, these other guys like the spencer striders of the world in blake snell last year who beat him out for the nl Cy young now a giant thankfully but j- this is just because he doesn't have these crazy strikeout numbers he also doesn't walk a lot of guys and he works quick on the mound keeps your defense active and engaged. All of these things benefit your whole team. If you're not walking guys and in, in, in you're getting ground balls in play, easy grounders that keep your guys on their toes, active, engaged, it's so much easier to play defense behind a guy like that. You guys probably played Little League or baseball at some level. You know, or even if you didn't, you can just see it by watching on the field. It is so much easier to stay engaged when you're not just standing out there for four, five, six batters at a time without having a ball in play. And these all or nothing guys that are kind of like Blake Snell, where you either get a strikeout or a walk, it your 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 feet get heavy. You kind of you're having to work to stay engaged and, and involved in the game. And all of a sudden you get a hot shot over to you at third base or something and and you're not ready. You're you're not engaged. I mean, I, that, I don't think that would ever happen to Matt Chapman because he's a platinum glove player for a reason. But point being, it's tough to stay engaged when you got a pitcher up there who's throwing a lot of pitches and not a lot of balls are getting hit into play. With Logan Webb, you don't have to worry about any of that. And he works so quick on the mound that you're not just sitting out there waiting for him as a defender behind him. You're ready to go. Guys love playing behind pitchers like Logan Webb. You don't think Nick Ahmed and Matt Chapman love Logan Webb starts? I'm telling you, those two guys are probably happier than any Giants fans when that guy's on the hill because they get to do their thing over there on the left side of the infield and show off that glove, flash that leather, make a web gem or two. That is the beauty of a Logan Webb. Do you guys remember the web gem segment on SportsCenter? That was my favorite thing to watch as a kid when every night I'd tune in for for the top 10 back in the golden days of, of ESPN and all that. And Every day I'm tuned into baseball tonight, looking for, looking for web gems. And that's what the giants get now. And you don't get many of those across baseball. I feel like anymore, because it is so heavily geared towards strikeout or home run in today's, in today's game. And the giants aren't doing that. And it is so much more entertaining. I know people like the long ball chicks, dig the long ball, all that kind of stuff. You know what I like? I like watching the ball actually do something in play. I like seeing contact. I like seeing the bat hit the ball. I love the sound of the bat, the ball off the bat, the crack of the bat. I like seeing guys make defensive plays. I like seeing guys try and beat throws out down the line. Look what Jung Hoo Lee did twice in this game. He's got a ton of infield hits already this year. He's going to keep getting more. This team is fun to watch. And it's because of guys like Logan Webb who pitch to contact, keep the game moving along, keep your whole defense engaged. And it works, man. It is effective. On top of all of it being fun and good for the fans, good for the team, it's very effective. There's a reason he finished top two, top two in NL Cy Young voting with a losing record. This guy is a legit bona fide starter in baseball. Put some respect on my dude's name. I don't even care that he's a Kings fan. Like, this needs to stop. Logan Webb is an ace. If you disagree, go do some more research or go take a walk one or the other that's all the time i got to talk about on that one we got some more to break down from this one on the other side tyro estrada is doing some great things at the plate and some other some other fun things from around the yard tonight stick with us on the locked on giants postcast 
I'm Eric Tripoli and go, we'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less than and add them to your prize picks entry today. Prize picks has something for every sports fan from baseball and basketball to League of Legends and everything in between. You can even pick LeBron, Shohei Otani, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in the same entry. Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. It's Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. Just a couple more notes from the yard tonight. Jung Hu Lee, 10 game hit streak. He's so consistent at the dish, and he is the most consistent giant on the team. An absolute home run of a signing. We say this every show, but look at what this guy is doing out there. That catch in center where he had to run like all the way across center field to make that play up in the on the warning track. That was great. That was great. He makes it look so easy out there, even though he's got to go all this way. These are not routine fly balls, guys. These are guys, these are hits. For, if, if you have Austin Slater in center, that might be a hit. That might be a double off the wall. If Jung Hu Lee's out there, it's a it's a F8, man. Like this is so nice to have that security blanket out there. It, he's just soothing to have in the lineup you just know he's going to get on base he's going to give you a chance to win he's going to run really well had another first to third today that guy just looks so smooth when he runs it looks like you do that like auto focus thing like you click on his face and you set the the video to auto focus or like auto center whatever it is and the face stays right in the middle and the whole camera moves around him that's what it looks like is happening when you watch him run but that it's just his head is so still while he runs and that is such a benefit in the field because you never lose track of the ball that way he just glides man so smooth at everything he does at the plate in the field running the bases i love watching this guy play baseball and it was it was pretty fun out at the yard tonight you know another guy who i've been really enjoying watching play lately is tyro estrada he's really barreling the ball up really well he almost had another multi-hit game tonight as he roped one down the left field line that just barely went foul. He thought it was going to stay fair. He was hot out of the box, moving around first, heading for second. And that ball just barely went foul. But tons of hard contact coming off the bat of Tyro Estrada lately. You love to see that because he started the season so cold and he was so good for them last year. You really hoped it wasn't just a fluke season. And I don't think it is, man. Tyro has been progressively getting better and better and better. And I think he's going to keep doing what he's doing lately. Like he's busted out of this slump. And I think Tyro is going to continue to rake at the dish. One last note, just because it was a Logan Webb start, of course it ended up being Sac State night out at the yard. They had the Hornet come like they're the Hornets, you know, the mascot. So the Hornet came out and threw the first pitch And this guy. I don't know if you guys saw the, the Rob Gronkowski pitch that he threw out in Boston. Uh, I think that was last week, maybe the week before. And he just spiked it. Didn't even attempt to cross home plate with the pitch. That's kind of what it looked like the Hornet did tonight, but the Hornet was trying to get that ball over the plate. <laughs> he spiked it about 25, 30 feet in front of home plate. And it makes sense that they had Sac State night on a Logan Webb start. He's a Sacramento guy. He, he loves everything about Sacramento, the Kings, the Beams, all of it. So shout out Sac State night at the yard. Not shout out that Hornet who spiked that that ball. Uh, not a, not a great look out there if you're uh, if you're that guy, whoever's inside that uh, <laughs> that that mascot head. But results in a Giants win. You love to see it. You love the vibes out at the yard. The Giants now won three of their last four. And they're maybe getting something rolling. You got it continues against the Diamondbacks tomorrow. The Giants roll on with this four game series. They play Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the D backs. And they also see the Mets in this homestand. So they're here for a while a 10 game homestand, three series. And the Giants will have an opportunity to pull themselves over 500 before 
They head back out on the road. And they took a big step in getting there tonight with this win, five to nothing over the Diamondbacks again. Logan Webb, seven dominant innings, only three base runners retired, a career high, nineteen consecutive batters in this one. Fun game, man. Fun game for the Giants. Time to time to string a few of these together, man. We got last night, we got tonight. Let's keep it rolling tomorrow against the Diamondbacks. Blake Snell on the hill. Let's get it going. Let's keep these bats rolling. Let's keep these bats hot. Let's let's score more than three runs again tomorrow. Please, <laughs> please, please. And, and maybe Blake Snell finds his footing out there. He's had a, a, a little bit of a rough start to the year. He didn't have a spring. He You can throw in the offseason with offseason throwing programs, but throw in at some high school with a, with a high school level catcher or a college level catcher is not the same as throwing batting practices with your guys or or throwing real bullpen sessions or, or simulated games, scrimmages, uh, spring training. This, this is not the same. They're not the same. So Snell, hopefully he figures it out a little bit more tomorrow. I'm sure that he will be fine. I am not worried about him in the slightest bit. But maybe tomorrow's the start of it. Maybe 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 he finds his rhythm up there, gets a, let's say, like six, seven strikeouts for Snell tomorrow. I would love to see him put up a, a seven in the strikeout total tomorrow and uh, get a win. Get another Giants win. That's the most important stat of, not for pitchers, but for the team, obviously, is another Giants win. That's all the time we got for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in for this one. This has been the Locked on Giants postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Ingle, and we will see you next time. Peace.